Hi there and welcome back. In this video I want to take this rotational object, the vase, <laughs> so to speak, um, that we did in the other video and make it 3D printable. Now this looks like a 3D printable object but there are some issues with it and I want to show you my process um, how to make things like this 3D printable if they are not yet uh, clean enough to be sent to the 3D printer. All right, more on that in a minute. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. Okay, let's get things started. Here's my object. There it is. Looks good. And uh, yeah, anyways, the first uh, step in terms of checking whether something's <clears throat> solid enough to be 3D printed is, of course, us looking at our default tray and our, our uh, entity info panel. And if it's, it doesn't say solid component or a solid group, then this is not a solid and we're going to run into issues at some point. It may export as an STL and it may be corrected in the processing software, but maybe not. You know, and it would be nice to actually have this all clean before we even send it out. All right, so let's get this analyzed and let's get this fixed. Um, now, in terms of analyzing this, <clears throat> for one, we don't have to look at the color because that is meaningless uh, for 3D printing. So we're going to turn monochrome mode on. <clears throat> we can turn on X-ray view if it helps us. It's often useful to kind of see things behind other things <clears throat> and i'm gonna leave um the hidden geometry off i'm gonna use that in a minute that's really useful for our process here but for now i'm just gonna leave it off and then the best way to inspect for 3d uh printability <laughs> if that's ever a word <clears throat> is of course the solid inspector that one is in uh the um uh, sketchup pro as an extension and it's built into the web version and you can just you know highlight something and then it'll tell you what's wrong with it and you can see now here there's surface border you can see that down here it's actually nicely highlighted and some internal face edges and it actually turns out they're also down here so now um where did they come from well what did i do uh to get this thickened well i basically created the outer shell using the method in my other video and then i offset that or thickened it using um, Fredo's tool. Now that works really well when you have, you know, these kind of large, um, I don't know, uh, areas or lines or whatever. <clears throat> but once you have these um, sharp corners, you can run into issues and you see exactly here in, in X-ray view what happened. So now basically these two surfaces, they folded uh, on each other and now we got this mess of basically some geometry overlapping other geometry and this is not clean enough to be 3d printed the outside shell looks good that's all great <clears throat> and most of the other inside shell is actually great too it's really just this ring here of faces in there and then now it's maybe a good time to quickly look at hidden geometry if i turn on hidden geometry under view hidden geometry um, you can see all these faces in there and now um, those need to go somehow and need to be fixed. Okay, how to fix it? Well, a good first step is always a uh, solid inspector because it has a fixed button. <laughs> Might as well use it, right? So um, with the object selected, I'm going to click on fix all and it says that it can't do it. Um, Sometimes this works like a charm, you know, everything's done in just a click of a button, but other times it doesn't. And so now we need to dig a little deeper and find out how to, how to you know, find these errors and, and how to um, uh, get rid of them. Okay, so you can see here, this is, oopsie, uh, wait, let's get out of this guy here. You can see, of course, that this is a component, so I'm just going to explode that so that we have oops, basic geometry right here. 
I'm going to leave um, the hidden geometry view off because this way I can select these larger combinations of faces, these surfaces here, and I can hide those. Now I can highlight this surface and I've got a key combination for hiding things. So I'm going to do that. And I can do the same here. And then what I'll see is, well, the surfaces, they hide nicely. I do have these bounding lines that are actually superfluous. They could actually be deleted, but, but they don't hurt anybody because they're at the edge of my surface. So that's all good. I can now keep going up here and checking my other parts. You know, once you hide things, you can look inside and you can, you can um, find issues, of course. And now, I know already my issue is down here, so I'm <laughs> kind of looking in the wrong direction. But you'll see down here how um, we've got this overlapping and there's some kind of funky display thing happening here too. So that's that's not great. So that's that's my ultimate issue here. So my process again would be if I didn't know that this was the issue, I would actually keep hiding things and keep looking inside and you know deleting faces as I can and then unhiding and, and fixing things. Now this here is a little tricky to just delete, even if I turned on hidden geometry right now, uh, especially then, <laughs> because then I can't, can't really see behind there and, and you know, even X-ray view doesn't help me much right now. So that's not ideal. So I'm gonna um, unhide everything, yet another key combination and my next step for something like this, where we have faces that overlap other faces, is to do an intersect. And easiest way to do that is to triple click on your object. You could also, of course, you know, do this here, but I'm just going to triple click. <clears throat> and when you do that, everything is selected. All the faces that are attached, they're selected. And I can now go ahead and say intersect faces with selection right there. And now it takes a little second, but at some point it's done. And now I can go ahead and start hiding things. And I could now go in here. Now what you can see here, there's a line where these faces intersect, where they meet. And I could actually go ahead and manually delete these other faces that are over there to the left of this line um, because they're uh, you know erroneous, and um, I, I could manually clean this up. But let's give it a try again with the solid inspector. So now everything is intersected with itself. So anything that overlaps it has a has a cutting line basically two faces that overlap, and I can go ahead and make this a group again. <clears throat> could have done a component too. Um, anyways, still not solid as expected, but I can go to tools and solid inspector and I get another set of error messages and I can actually turn this thing on there again and it'll say 137 internal faces. The nice thing now is that they're separate enough that the fix all button works. Ta -da! <laughs> Everything's gone. So that's a nice way to make something 3D printable, basically intersecting the whole thing with itself and then letting Solid Inspector clean up any geometry that's um, erroneous or extraneous and uh, you should be then good to go. So now if I highlight, oops, sorry, get out of Solid Inspector. If I highlight this now, I see this solid group. And I can now go ahead and highlight, file, export, 3D model as an STL, which is down here somewhere. And then, of course, export that and send it to the 3D printer. So that's one way you can make something 3D printable, basically make something become a solid that wasn't a solid. Um, that doesn't always work. <laughs> Sometimes models are just too messy to use any of this, but it's one approach that I'd like to take, um, at least as a first step. All right. I hope this was helpful. 
Let me know um, if this worked for you too. And I wish you a happy 3D printing.